Hi, you're with Chandi, Pat Goodley once again, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the answer to the question that I asked you in the last video, which is where you had to calculate growth over previous available date. If you did solve it, big shout out to you coming in the end of the video. But if you tried it and maybe if you weren't able to solve it, I will try to make the solution as simple as possible for you so that you understand what's going on here step by step. So let's just kind of build the solution right from scratch. So I provided you a sample output here, but this is actually a picture. We will actually build the output right from scratch. So I've already made a very simple pivot table here. I have included the date column of my data and I have written a very simple measure called total sales. If you take a look at the measure, this is nothing but the sum of the sales column of the data table. Simple measure, drag it into my pivot table and we are kind of good to go. Now I have to find out what is my growth over previous available date. That means if I'm trying to compare 185, I have to compare it to 1st of January's 145, right? So for that, I'm just going to write a measure step by step and you will hopefully understand what's going on here. So if I actually go to the data tab and maybe create a new measure. I'll call this measure as growth. And for now, I will write a simple max formula or maybe let's just write a selected value formula. So selected value and I'm just going to write the date here and close the bracket, press enter. Note that you get these date dot day dot month. If you actually end up selecting any one of these, you are trying to refer to the hidden calendar table. I don't really want to do that. I'm just going to close the bracket and I'm just going to confirm this with an enter. And let's just see what is it the output that we get. We are still trying to build it. So let's just see what do we get. If I actually drag this uh, little measure, which is in the making in my pivot table, what I get is the very date against which I am working. So if I'm working against first of of January, the selected value function is going to pick up that very date and give me as an output. But at the total level, I don't get the date because we have a lot of dates and there is none of a single date selected. So we don't have any date at the total level. This is good so far. Now, what I want to do is I want to pick up all the dates which are smaller than the current date. That means if the current date is 6th of January, I want to pick up all the dates which are smaller than the 6th of January. All the dates which are available to me, not all the dates which exist. So I have two dates before 6th of January, which is the 5th of January and the 1st of January. I want to pick up both these dates, right? So let's just do that. So I'm just going to come to the growth formula once again, and I'm going to start working with this measure further ahead. So I'll maybe use the filter function and I'll see in the filter function, the first input is the name of the table. So I'll say that, hey, why don't you go in the entire table there is and remove any kind of filters there are on the date. So I'm just going to say all and I'm just going to pick up the date column right here. Close the bracket, press uh, enter and then I will pick up this particular measure here, selected value. And I'm just going to say that once the filters have been removed from the date column, then I have a condition and my condition is that the individual date should be less than equal to the current date. So selected value, remember that once we kind of drag the selected value in my pivot table here, I got the very date against which I was working. So I'm trying to say, hey, remove the filter from the date. When you have all the dates, why don't you check that if any of the date is less than the very date against which I am working. So that's what I will do. Now, the problem with this filter function is that the filter function will actually give you a table. And if you commit to this formula, this formula is going to give you an error because in the pivot table, you cannot have a full table as an output. So I have to kind of manage the table and maybe wrap the table inside an aggregator. And if you want to see, you can actually see that it's going to give me an error. But if I actually wrap this in an aggregator, maybe counter rows, it will actually count the number of rows there are in the table. And I'll get some idea that is my measure right or wrong. So I'll wrap this around in the count rows function, close the bracket, commit to that, press enter. And now if you take a look at the result that we have, it'll sort of make sense to you. So if you take a look against 5th of January, we get the number one. That means there is only one row or one date, which is smaller than the 5th of January, which is 1st of January. Again, 6th of January, I'll get two because there are two dates smaller than 6th of January. And that's the condition that I mentioned. So sort of working fine, <laughs> but I do not really want to have these numbers here. I actually want to have the reference to the previous date. So against 5th of January, I want 1st of January. Against 6th of January, I want the 5th of January, so on and so forth. So you can see that here, this is actually the number of rows in the table. That means that if I'm against the 16th of January, there are six rows or six dates, which are smaller to 16th of January. All that I will say is that in that table, which has got six rows, perhaps, why don't you pick up the largest date? And if I'm just referring to these six rows, which are these previous six dates, the largest date is obviously going to be the date that existed, which is 13th of January. So I'm just going to come to the growth formula and replace the count rows with the max x function. And I'm going to say, hey, why don't you go to this particular table and this particular table? Why don't you pick up the date, which is the date? 
and I'm just going to commit to that. Now it's actually building a table which with five or six or whatever number of rows and you're saying why don't you actually pick up the largest date in this particular table. So commit to that, press enter and you will start getting the previous date. So if you take a look at this thing here, so against 13th of January, I've got the previous available date by the way and against 20th of January, I've got 16th of January. So far so good but as of now we have the date although we want to compare the sales value. Now once you have the date now I'm just going to use the date to find what the sales value was there available on that particular date. So I'm just going to go to the growth here and I am just going to maybe declare that as a variable. So I'm just going to say this is my previous date. This is working fine. That becomes my previous date. Now I will find out what was my sale on the previous date. So I'm just going to maybe declare another variable and call this as previous sales value. And I'm just going to write maybe calculate, calculate my total sales, but the total sales should be calculated, which is equivalent to the previous date. So I'm just going to maybe write a filter function once again, and I'll just say maybe all remove any kind of filter there is on the date. And then why don't you check if the date is equals to previous date or not. So whenever the date is equals to the previous date and whatever number of rows that you get for only those rows, you should actually calculate total sales. And maybe I'll just write another return here. And I think I've missed closing a bracket here. Okay. I'll write a return here and then I'll say, Hey, why don't you return the previous sale value this time? I'm just going to commit to that and press enter. What I should get is now the previous sales value. So I press enter and what do I get? I get the previous sales value. So right here. So you can see that we have 145, which is the previous sale value, 185, which is the previous sales value. So the method that I followed was that I first find the previous date. Then having that previous date, I try to match what was the sale value on that previous date and then get that right here. Now, once you have the previous sale value, you can sure enough find the growth. So growth is very, very simple. All that I will say is that why don't you check for two things if the previous sales is not equals to zero or not equals to blank. And the second condition is the total sales is not equals to blank because it's going to be blank at the total level. That's why I'm writing these conditions at the total level. You will just have the sales value, but not the previous sales value. This is going to take care of the total. So if these two conditions are true, then I definitely want to calculate my growth. So the growth is going to be total sales divided by my previous sales value minus one. Uh, you can also use a divide function if you fancy, but that's totally okay. I'm just going to press enter and that is my growth over previous day. This is showing a zero because this is not yet converted to a percentage. I can actually do that and maybe convert that to a two decimal. Let's just take a look at the result of the sample output. This is 27.59 and that's what we have. So we had 145, the sales increased and hence we have about a 28%, 27% kind of growth so on and so forth. This is absolutely fine. That's how I calculate growth over previous available date. All right, a big shout out to everybody who participated in this little DAX challenge. We have Sandy who commented on the YouTube channel, Ola, and this gentleman, I don't really know how to pronounce your name, but your answer is right. Big shout out to you. And some people also commented on the blog. So Prashant here, Jito here, and Sandeep here. Pretty good guys. Thank you so much for participating in this little DAX versus Excel challenge. Now, if you are a starter in DAX and maybe you have uh, problems in understanding how DAX works, I can actually help you understand DAX right from scratch, bring you up to a level where you start uh, building sophisticated solutions to solve practical business problems. That is done through my online course on DAX. I highly suggest that you take a look at it and you will find that extremely, extremely helpful. Thank you so much for participating in this. Let me know if you have any questions around this. I'll be very, very happy to take a look at uh, your question and answer that immediately. Thanks so much and I'll see you soon. Bye.